for the NFL recap. Week number three, right? Yep, week number three in the NFL. Week three. I, I went about this a little bit differently. I just said I'm going to pick ten performances that were the most impressive to me. It It is going to cover almost all of the games. It, it will cover exactly ten of the games. I like that. How about that? Well, I mean, there's what, 16 games? Yep. So six of them we probably could just throw away. Oh. Right? <laughs> Uh, For now, anyway. Some of these I gave a little more love. One, one probably could have not made the list, but I'm glad I gave it to him because I like the guy. Let's start okay. off, and these are no... Where, uh, before you do that, order. this is brought to you by oh, Tunica, Mississippi, as right. you can see behind us. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. TunicaTravel.com is where you need to go to get more information. You can wager on any NFL game, any college game at any of their six... That's right, six now, not five. Six sports books down in Tunica, Mississippi. Uh, the Fitz is opening up this weekend, Friday, September twenty eighth. Right? Yeah, we'll be there. Eleven a.m. is the grand opening. Us and uh, Gary Parrish from CBS Sports, along with uh, a few other friends. Uh, but it's going to be a good time. Come out to the Fitz uh, this weekend, this Friday, eleven a.m. We will be out there. TunicaTravel dot com, and you can also get our picks over at WinningCuresEverything dot com. Let's jump into it. Yeah. So, I actually watched the first set of Sunday games at okay. Samstown's great sports book. I really? enjoyed that a whole lot. It was a good experience. Me and a buddy went down. Um, didn't get to see this first guy because he played last night. <laughs> the only person that I'm going to talk about out of my list of 10 that didn't win a game, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzmagic. Impressed Absolutely. me last night. And, and it's the fall that made the comeback so exciting. Now, if he comes out and throws for 400 yards a game and four touchdowns again, then it's just another thing that he did. But we watched the entire first half, and it looked like he had lost it. Old Ryan Fitztragic, maybe, and just <laughs> falling apart. Doesn't know what he's doing. Throwing interceptions. Good. Three passes in a row. Turnover, turnover. One of them's pick six. Oh, just, just garbage. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I did sit and watch that. So my wife and I were watching uh, a TV show, feeding the baby, all this kind of stuff. But I had it playing on my iPad the whole time, and I, I was worried about the game. I texted you afterwards, like as soon as the Steelers got to take a knee, I texted you my ticket. Yep. That I had bet on the Steelers to win, and I had bet the over fifty three and a half, and I felt really good about it. Like, I felt great about it right before the game. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be great. And then the first half, I'm like, yes. Like, we're at 40 points. The Steelers are going to hit this over by themselves. This is great. Then they don't score at all in the second half. And Tampa Bay starts coming back, and I am freaking out. Like, I, I thought that they – I mean, had they not called that punt return back. Oh, oh it's a ball game. It's they, a ball game. I, I think they, they absolutely would have come down and scored and, and won the game again. No, no doubt. Okay. Ryan Fitzpatrick, what was so impressive was the fact that he had fallen apart and was just a complete shamble of himself the first half. And in the second half, he just comes out and he looks like he did the first two weeks. Um, and he just yeah. couldn't be stopped. Everything he did was 400 plus great. yards passing. First, and he got them all in the second half. First man. quarterback to ever do that. Three, ever have three, three straight 400. Straight. Yeah. And to start off the season like that just, against the Steelers, the Eagles, and uh, uh, who they and the up Saints. With the Saints, yeah. You're yeah, talking yeah. about three perennial playoff teams, three teams that people have going to the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, like they're and, and throwing for mega yards on them. Now they they went two and one, but my gosh, oh, they, they didn't were, win the game. No. They were expected to go zero and three in that's these right. three. So right. it's like they still looked good even in defeat last night. So that's 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 one. And, and these aren't in any order. I guess I shouldn't give one. Number number two. I'm going to give some love to a coach. You don't normally do that. Matt, well, I've got three coaches listed. Okay. I've actually got four, and I've got four quarterbacks. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Matt Patricia taking on his yeah. predecessor, Bill Belichick, and it had looked like everything was going wrong for him. There are reports that the team was very upset, didn't like him coming in trying to make them run and – and be a, a hard-nosed coach, they liked Caldwell. Caldwell was a nice guy. They all enjoyed playing for him. He won nine games last year, had a winning record. Does it still surprise you that they fired 
They fired him after going nine and seven. I kind of respect it in the sense that if you know somebody's ceiling is something and it's not where you want to be, just go ahead and change it over. Yeah, that makes like sense. Like it's it's the Andy Dalton philosophy that I've had. He wins too many games to lose his job, but does he? Because let's just keep trying somebody different. Yeah. Until until we get the right guy. Um, but week three. Bill Belichick coming off a loss, coming off a bad loss, too. Yeah. I mean, where they just got their butts whipped. But that Jacksonville team is a defensive juggernaut, so you kind of understand they beat up on the Patriots. The the, <laughs> the Lions are not supposed to be that. No. No, not not Intercepted in Tom a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, it – Made him look confused. Yeah. It was just a big day for Matt Patricia. Really proud of him. Yeah, that was uh, – that I'll tell you this. The Patriots' defensive numbers oh, garbage. look absolutely like worst in the NFL Like as far as efficiency goes. I th- yeah, I think they are going to be the worst in the NFL. It is I mean, they, really they were down right there now. last year, so I'm trying to not get too panicked. So the Lions did have if, – if do you have this guy on your list, Lions running back? Nope. Carry nope. on Johnson. I'm going to toss him out there. Nope. No two players are coaches from the same team. Okay, well, carry on Johnson deserves to be on a list of That's most right. impressive – 70 games the Lions had gone without a 100-yard rusher. First one in a long Carry time. Carry on Johnson, 16 rushes for 101 yards, and the Lions fans went bananas. And it, and it won't be that long again. I mean, Oh, he, no, he is. He's there. Oh, he ab- he made Auburn's offense last year, yeah. and you no. there was a considerable drop-off when when he was injured. He's and a stud, out of the, and, uh, and he's, he's one of Patricia's guys, so he didn't know life before Matt. Yeah. Big thing. Let's go back to the quarterbacks. Okay. Cannot have a conversation about impressive numbers in games and situations without talking about Patrick Mahomes. It's Showtime Mahomes. That's his new nickname, apparently. I I've, saw this on, like, all these different uh, websites. I've right? never seen anything like this. Oh, it's it's bonkers. I've been watching football for a long time. Everybody's trying to come up with other quarterback comparisons. The I guess if I had to compare somebody, it would be Brett Favre. He's just a lot more accurate, Brett Favre. Yeah, he's much more accurate. Well, than yeah, Brett but Favre. but it's, the, the, I guess the reason I give him Brett is because he looks like he's having so much fun. Oh, out he's there. having a blast! But and my God, none who, of those who other be with all those weapons. None of those other quarterbacks in the past. If you're looking at your Elways and your Montanas and all those guys, they never look like they were having this much fun. No, Brett, not not in the slightest. Brett did, and and he he is just. I I don't know words to explain other than impressive. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's something else. I mean, uh, the the Chiefs look almost unbeatable now. Um, I, I'll tell you this. I remember watching, and I, I didn't even think about this until somebody else brought it up over the weekend. I saw it on Twitter, um, and it's the guy that runs Smart Football, uh, Chris something or other. But he brought it up, and he said, "Man, oh, it, it wasn't. Is it Smart Football? I, either way." He brings up the Patrick Mahomes Baker Mayfield matchup when they were in the Big Twelve, Texas Tech against Oklahoma. They they accounted for thirteen hundred plus passing yards in the game. In one game, it was like a sixty-two to fifty-five game, yeah. and it was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And everybody talks about like the West Virginia Baylor game from years ago that was like seventy to sixty-three. This, this was, was just as impressive. Baylor Baylor ran the football a lot. Their their offense was a whole lot like Oregon's. They high flying, put up a lot of points, but they did a bunch more on the ground than you really yeah. think. Yeah, and they were but, still moving. Yeah, you Texas know. Tech and 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 those guys. They they don't they don't run no. the football. Now Oklahoma will. Oh yeah, they yeah. They but can. at this point in time, they they were not. They didn't have to. But that was looking back on that game into what these quarterbacks have turned into. Uh, Pat Mahomes is I, look. I was skeptical when they drafted him, especially that early. But you know, it's one of those he's got a big arm. But like, you go back and look at his completion percentage, and then you watch him, and he's deadly accurate. Yep. But you're like, okay, well, it's in a Big Twelve offense against Big Twelve defenses, and you know, eh, like what's he gonna? He's treating the NFL like they are Big Twelve defenses, and it is bonkers to watch. I don't know I, how I've to never seen it. anything like it. The other guy. Don't know how to explain. Going back to a coach now. Sean McVay, I can't figure out. So we now have a year and three games of a head coaching sample size. He looks like he's just five steps ahead of everybody else at all times. 
other than Todd Gurley, nobody on that offense is crazy impressive. I don't know that golf is a top 10, top 15 quarterback in the NFL if he no. plays for anybody else. I agree with I, that. I, you know, last year Cooks playing in New England was a top 10 receiver. But but he was, at, at the same time, even though he was playing in New England, he was pretty forgettable. That's Oh, no, he was not their main guy. He was not their go-to yeah, person. He was, that just, was, still he was forgettable. Gronk. Like, you'd almost and, forget that he's on the team. And when they needed a play, they went to Amendola. They didn't go to him. Yeah. And, and it's just like you've got this island of misfit toys. They're all kind of good, and they're all good at something, but nobody's ever been able to put together this algorithm for them all to be maximum efficiency and success. And Sean McVay's figured out how to do that. Well, and he did it with the group last year. And Wade year. Phillips. Yeah, like Wade Phillips Wade is uh, kind of always – I guess I'm leaning more towards the offense than the defense because defensive guys can do that. They don't really – there is defensive scheming. There's a lot of it. And I guess you need, you know, one guy to do his job so you can do your job. But offenses, they usually predicate on stars. Yeah. Just athletes, guys being better than the people they're going against. This is not that. This is no. not that. The DBs should be able to cover Robert Woods. They locked him down in Buffalo. He was a nobody. Cooper Cup is an average receiver anywhere else. I, and he I, looks I just, like an all-star on this team. No, yeah. Oh, he's he's one of the best receivers in yeah. football. It's just really impressive. I want to know, is there ever going to be a book on him? Or is this just something where his brain is working at such a different level than everybody else's that he's going to be able to continue to do this for a decade? Well, are like, they going to be the New catch up to him, Are we'll, they going to be the New England Patriots? Are they, is he going to be the Belichick that can say, you know what, for the next 15 years, I'm going to win five Super Bowls in 20 years, and I'm going to play for eight of them? I mean, I, it's, that's, it's that's, really early. You, yeah, you're right. That, but That's why I'm asking the question, not crowning him that. It, it is a, a valid question. Because he does look like he is completely ahead of everybody else it's, right it's now. It's not like we have a three game sample size. We have a year in three game sample size. Yeah. They are what they went thirteen and four with the playoff loss last year, and even that was like a, a close game. You know, it, it, you're playing against a team with a bunch of experience. Now you have the experience. What are they gonna do this year? Like I, I picked them thirteen and three this year. What did you have them at? Twelve and four, thirteen and three? It, it would, it's up there. It's no no worse than twelve and four. There's a chance I might have had him fourteen and two. It's well, and gonna be in that wheelhouse. All of that was was based on him. Like oh, based on totally. coaching. Totally. I, I I absolutely do not believe that that golf would be anything special if he was at any other team almost. I agree. I Maybe agree. I'm not giving him enough credit, but when well, this same I'm not. bunch under Jeff Fisher like, was garbage. Did nothing. I mean, they were one of the worst teams in the. I know they finished with like seven and nine, but but like that's. I know they they finished worse than that that year, didn't they? Well, yeah, they. But I'm just historic. like that year he got fired. Anyway. Well, the year he got fired, yeah, they were real bad. So all right, after that, I'm going with my guy, my guy, Drew Brees. The New Orleans Saints are back on track. Buckle your seatbelts. My my Super Bowl pick is not dead. They are alive. They are well. They're two and one. Yeah, they yeah. went. On the road to Atlanta. Two games that it looked like they probably should have lost. And they still find a way to win. They found a way to win. That's I'm what championship teams well, do, okay. by the way. In that game, it shouldn't have went to overtime. One of the Calvin Ridley plays absolutely was not a touchdown. Absolutely not a touchdown. Every replay showed his foot hit down. His toe was like three inches out of bounds. They said it wasn't, you know, evidence to, to, to call it back. My That's my fantasy fine. football team says it was a touchdown. That's so I'm good with it. That's okay. You can you can have that. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, at the end of Drew the day, Brees the Saints wasn't going to be stopped. Drew Brees looks like he will be playing much longer than Tom Brady. Ooh. Okay. Longer as in, I mean, he's like six years, five years less than, younger than him. Three years No, he's 39. Him? And Tom's 30. Okay, 31. Tom's 41. Yeah. So two years younger. But, I don't know. I think Drew's still going to be done after two. I think uh, he, he signed a two-year deal, and I he think probably, probably will be. And I that. think that that is because if he if he wins it all this year, he's hanging it up. You're probably right, uh, and I don't I think would. it's because like he can't play anymore. Like this dude can obviously play. Like this is it this coming week? No, it's next weekend that he will hit 1,500 yards, yes. right? And that'll be the most yardage all time. If he time. does it this weekend, it's. It's, That's it's, a lot. It's all kinds of records. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's it, like they look good now. 
they they found themselves against the Falcons, and I had the Falcons in this game. I thought the I'm, Falcons were going to win this. I'm very curious to see what Mark Ingram does and and how they change the offense because I don't think they're going to go back to what they did last year. I think this offense is different than it was last year. Last I think year, Michael still need Thomas did not get involved at all. I no. think now Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara are the center fold of this offense. Alvin Kamara might be the best player in football. They, I think they still need a presence to be able to run between. Like, championship teams, you have to be able to get that yard when you need it. I don't know right? that you do. I disagree. I don't think the Eagles have – I mean, I don't think the uh, the Eagles didn't have it last year. The Eagles um, had LeGarrette Blunt last year. <laughs> what are you but, talking but about? But they didn't use him much at all in the playoffs. That, maybe no. not so much in the playoffs. Like they, but that's, they that's, when, that's when you need him. I'm telling you, uh, and, and, and right now, I don't think that Kareem Hunt's that guy to get no, you no, a I, yard. I agree but with the, you. But the Chiefs don't have that. I think the game is different, Gary. I just do. I think the NFL game is becoming so much more like the college game for the offenses. You can't hurt anybody. You can't hit anybody. You can't play defense. And so I think the teams that are going to be great are going to be the teams that say, just hell with it. We're not going to play defense. We're just going to outscore you. You want to beat us, you better put up 40. Because we're hanging 38 all day. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you might be and right. And I think the Saints have done that. I think the uh, the the we definitely have seen the Rams and the Chiefs do that. Yeah, that's true. They just said, screw it. We're not going to play defense. We brought the Rams at least brought a bunch of defensive dudes in. Hadn't worked. No, they, they got they got almost no sacks. They're, they're 29th, I think, in the league in sacks. Yeah, um, which and, is still bonkers to me. Yeah, like it, you got you got Sue for a year. You got Aaron Donald, and and you're almost last in the league in sacks. Like that's, but they are getting quarterback pressures and whatnot. I think people are scheming around those guys. I think they're just getting the ball out really fast. I think a lot of teams are having to play from behind, but but they're not. They understand we can't just go out there and throw it three times, because then our defense stays on the field and they get gassed. And yeah. so teams are just running these. They're taking teams out of their game plan because oh, they're yeah. getting behind so quickly. Yeah, I agree. All right, my next is a little bit of a combo. I've done quarterback. I've done yep. head coach. We got like seven minutes. Just letting you know. Well, <laughs> to gone, keep it in we've this We've gone thing. too long. All right, then I'm going to roll. <laughs> These, all right, for a couple of us, we can just fly through. Adam Gase, Ryan Tannehill absolutely have been impressive. They're 3-0. and Nobody on the planet had the Dolphins going 3-0 and to start the season. It, raise your hand if you did. No, put it down, you damn liar. You just That's didn't. It. Nobody had that. Nobody. Adam Gase, like, think about this. Had they not dealt with so many injuries, what could this team – like they could be even more impressive than they are even at three and zero. How crazy is that? They got rid of all the guys that were bad locker room dudes, and Gase just said, "You, you just got to get me control of the locker room." Yeah, and if you get me control of the locker room, I can win games. I, I cannot understand how how not not that I don't understand it. I'm very impressed with how they're playing. Yes. Next one, we'll move on. The entire team of the Buffalo Bills. That's. <laughs> if if you don't give them credit today, you might not ever give them credit for anything. Yeah. And big ups to Sean McDermott and Josh Allen. Everyone said this guy can't play quarterback. He'll be the worst out of all these guys. Hey, Sunday out of all the rookies, he was the best. He he got comfortable, didn't he? He was the best. He he looked fantastic. I didn't see it coming. Uh Vikings haven't looked great, but I think the Bills had more to do with that than it. I think they just got pissed off that everybody was was pissing on them. This is right? the NFL. This is not college football. You do not beat people by 20 or 30 all the time, and those guys stay down. The old saying is still true. They live in big houses, too. Yeah. They are still professionals on the other side of this. They're not going to class. When they get beat two games in a row and embarrassed like that, they go to work and and they do their job, and they try to figure out how to beat the other team. They didn't just beat them. They beat the hell out of them. It, yeah. was, it was the biggest point spread that we've had in a couple of years. Yeah. And they covered the line that they were the dog of. Yeah. That's never happened. I mean, it's, it's insane. It was, what, a 38-point difference? Yeah. Like, it is the biggest ever. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous. All right. Now, this, most people would not care about this dude. But but I think we would. I'm giving love to my guy Mike Vrabel in the Tennessee Titans. Hey, 
a hundred percent. This guy looks like that team the real is, deal. That team is trash, but they are going to play you ugly. Every game is going to be garbage. I don't care what the under is. You bet the under in Titans games. They are going to play ugly games. You don't want to watch them. They're going to drag that. you into the mud. For sure. it, it's it, going to be. If bad. you enjoy ugly games, absolutely watch it. But like, I can understand why people would run through a brick wall for this guy. Yep. Marcus Mariota absolutely beat the Jaguars in Jacksonville with only three working fingers. Imagine if he had all five. Like, it, 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 tell me this: Do you think that they win that game? If Blaine Gabbert doesn't yeah, go down? Absolutely do. No, I think Blaine Gabbert could have won it too. Because because that game was all just guys fighting like hell. Yeah. Jacksonville is a tough, tough team. I think the Titans own Jacksonville. I don't know. Let's be real careful what we say that. I, hey, I'm just I'm just throwing Hold it on. out there. Like they I'm they've not won the last that. like Gary they won two of them last at year. WCE. Yeah. yeah that's, that's Gary. At Gary WCE. You can tweet me if you want to, but I'm all you Jacksonville fans. I, I listen, think the Titans I own think, you guys. I think Mike Bravel is doing a way better. And the only game he's lost is a crazy, ugly, weird, unpredictable game that Seven the weather hour yeah, football that game. the weather had two different delays. And the team is undefeated, and they're the best team in the AFC East. And and that's who that that's who they, they lost. They to. lost three guys to injury that day. Like that was he's winning this game with a combination of a beat up Marcus Mariota and Blaine Gavard. Yeah, that's. Bananas. They lost their best left tackle, the best offensive line. I mean, their best tight end, the security blanket, it doesn't matter. No, doesn't, it doesn't. It, they're going to be ugly. Mike Vrabel, my guy. Last two, we can go quickly. My two favorites, the two most important of the list, I said they weren't in any kind of order. These two are for last. Khalil Mack is an absolute monster. He's my favorite <laughs> player to watch play football right now. I've, Like I said, I, I love my brownies. I love the Patriots. I make no boons about it. Every now and then, I'll just find these other teams that I just fall in love with watching them play. I don't care about offense. When they get on offense, I turn the TV to a different game. When they go to defense, I am watching every snap of this guy. I've never seen a guy wreck a team, wreck teams the way he has single-handedly wrecked games all season so far. I agree with you. If he had a training camp and wasn't gassed in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers doesn't make that comeback. Aaron Rodgers doesn't make it back on the field. I think you you might be right. The only because he had limited snaps. And then last, Baker Effin Mayfield. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. I love Tyrod Taylor. I, nobody that, in the, the world. All the videos that we have of you talking high. about about Tyrod. I was so high on Tyrod. Listen, I hope he gets traded. I hope he gets stopped uh, uh, an opportunity to play somewhere else. I have no idea why he couldn't figure out what was going on in, in, in Cleveland. Baker took over that game Thursday night, and my whole life changed. He looks I've like a veteran, doesn't he? I've never seen in my life, and and I haven't been this excited about Browns games. I really wanted the Raiders to win Sunday because I think we have a Bill situation where, man, they're 0-3. They're going to throw the kitchen sink out. They can't start the season 0-4. My Browns are coming in off a win, maybe feeling a little bit good for themselves. I don't care. I don't care. This is Baker's first game where he gets all the reps in practice. He's my guy. Most exciting player in football, Khalil Mack. Just under him, Baker freaking Mayfield. I like it. I like it. I love Baker Mayfield. All right, don't forget, check out TunicaTravel.com. Check out WinningCuresEverything.com. That is the NFL Week 3 Recap.